What's Up this week, we've got Yusuf, Ozzy, The OJs, Jack White, Stevie Wonder, The Black Keys, and Keith Richards. File this under things we never thought we'd see. Here's Cat Yusuf Stevens standing arm in arm with Ozzy, Prince of Darkness Osborne, on stage in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Yusuf had kicked things off with a verse of his Peace Train in what quickly became the most entertaining part of last Saturday's Rally to Restore Sanity, March to Keep Fear Alive. And I believe it could be something good has begun. Peace train sounding loud. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It wasn't long before America's foremost political satirists and event MCs injected themselves into the mix, riffing on the notion of musical trains and milking the unlikely mashup for all it was worth. Not everyone was amused, however. Salman Rushdie later lashed out at Jon Stewart for inviting Yusuf, reminding him that Mr. Islam supported the Ayatollah Khomeini's death sentence against the Satanic Verses author back in 1989, and has never renounced or apologized for his hardline stance. But back on the mall, any unpleasant thoughts were quickly smoothed away by the arrival of the OJs, who serenaded the unwashed masses with their sonorous 1973 hit, Love Train. Carrot topped television host returns to the air this week with his new show Conan on the TPS network. Now it's been 10 months since the Tonight Show debacle shook up the late night lineup and left O'Brien without a job but $45 million richer. On his final New York show before his ill fated jump to LA, O'Brien invited on his pals the White Stripes for the final musical performance with Meg White uh, kind of sort of playing guitar. Numbers, letters, learn to spell. Nouns and books show and tell. Black time we will throw the ball. Back to class through the hall. Teach the marks I hide against the wall. During his summer sabbatical, Conan actually recorded and released a live album with the White Stripes frontman. So it isn't too much of a surprise that Jack will be the new show's first musical guest. <laughs> Who knew that Stevie Wonder had a thing for the vocoder four years before Frampton and a good three decades before Daft Punk? <laughs> Discovering this hugely entertaining lost episode of Soul on a music trading tracker last week sent us scurrying over to the PBS website where there are a few other gems from this old series available to stream. Among the many charms of this vintage recording are the audience shots. This 70s crowd is the hippest, funkiest group imaginable. And Stevie's superb band, dubbed Wonder Love, ratchet up the R&B and help send the classic superstition into funk rock overdrive. The Black Keys just might be America's hardest working rock band. Their sixth Danger Mouse produced record Brothers dropped in May, and they promptly kicked off a summer tour that saw them hopscotching across the Atlantic playing club dates, festivals, and TV slots, like this Letterman appearance where they showcase the album's first single, Tighten Up. Someone said, true love's dead, and I found them for, found them for, for you. Oh, beautiful face in a, a wicked way. Anything, these blues 
primitivists have actually loosened up since the summer, shedding their jacket and tie formalism for a more short-sleeved, shambolic stage presence. Here they are on Jules Holland last week. They'll be touring Europe for the remainder of the year. Catch them if you can. Even if you haven't read it yet, you've by now likely heard most of the juicy dirt that Keith Richards dishes up in his new autobiography, Life. Among the revelations, he quotes Marianne Faithful as having had no fun with Mick's tiny todger and says he misses his relationship with Jagger, who he cattily refers to as Her Majesty and Brenda. Here's the elegantly wasted one himself, alongside the rest of the world's greatest rock and roll band in a small London club in 1971, showing us how it's done. I'm Barnaby Marshall, see you next week on Rock Peaks. Thank you.